Okay, who's in here already? Hello. Tea time is back. We took a week off <laughs> because because life. I'm not even about to get into no excuses. Um, I'm going to give it some time like I always do to let people get here. Um, those of you that are here, can you let me know if you can hear me? You know, audio has been a thing the past few weeks. Hello, hi, it is me, I'm back. Took a little break for a week, not planned, but it happens. As usual, um, share and like this video so we can let people know to come in here. We have a special guest like we do every week, but a really special one this week. Miss Felicia George. Let me. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay, awesome. You guys can hear me. Uh, VJ, VJ, 85. That's so not true. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know it's a joke. Um, I just have to be mindful of most people are still at work over here. I was actually even thinking about going live a little bit later, but, uh, you know, I try to be respectful of the things. Oh, wow. Okay, girl. <laughs> Sorry, let me turn my computer notifications off and then we will get started. Okay, there we go. I should have done that before I logged on. So um, I'm Natasha Hastings. If you don't know, if you're new here, I think most of you here know me by now. But as usual, I'm going to ask you to like and share this video with your peeps so we can get some more people in the room. Um, we're going to have a chat with my friend, Felicia George. Let me get this. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, she used to be my training partner, but you know, she moved on, but it's all good. I won't hold it against her. Um, she's a two sport athlete, um, track and field and Bob Slay. We're going to talk about the bobsled versus bobsled, if there's a difference or not. Um, Two-time Olympian, 2012 Olympics, um, where she finished sixth place, and 2016, where she was also a finalist um, in Rio. And then she has a bronze medal in the bobsled with her <laughs> partner, Callie Humphreys in the winter Olympics. So summer and winter Olympian, Felicia George. Hi. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving slow, I'm moving slow. I'm, I'm working on the, um, the sound effects. How the are you? 
I'm good. How are you doing? Um, I'm I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm, I, I'm in this. This was a good year for me to leave Texas. I was, you listen. I was just about to say I'm in these crazy <laughs> Texas. I, I can't even call it streets because I'm at home. But you know, Texas <laughs> is like on top of itself right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been see- watching from afar. <laughs> lucky you so before we yeah. get started again guys please share and give us a thumbs up as usual you know drop your questions in the comments this will be a conversation <laughs> we started talking about some things during our sound check that i was like oh no let like let's wait until uh <laughs> we Save get on the chat so <laughs> <laughs> um so where do we start? What, what, tell us where you are. Where, where are you training right now? So I ran away from the cold. Um, I was in Toronto during the first lockdown. And then I was like, I cannot get caught here again. So I decided to come to Grenada. My family's Grenadian. Um, so I was like, I'm going to spend the whole winter down here from November. Beginning of November, I've been down here. Me and my coach. Um, I was just yeah, about to ask if you're there with your coach. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been perfect. It's been really good. Obviously, I have lots of family down here. And so it's been a nice little vibe. A nice little vibe. So I think I've shared this before. You know, we have a Grenadian connection, my grandfather, yeah. although he lives yeah. in Trinidad. And I think I need to ask. Every Trinidadian has some Grenadian family some and Grenadian, Grenadian family. Grenadian family. <laughs> so I would honestly, we should look into this. I bet you are cousins somewhere. I we bet might you. be. We <laughs> like, might be. I feel like my mom said that too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the crazy thing about Grenada is like they'll meet you and they say, Well, what's your last name? Judge? Judge for who? And then they'll go down the line and they'll be like, Oh, you're my cousin from there. I'm like, oh, Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So, what's coming up um, as far as like meets and stuff? And after this season, are you going back to Bob Slay? Like, what are the plans? <laughs> Um, so I'm getting ready to race. I'm going to head to the U S in April and start doing some races there. And then probably heading to Europe for May and June, maybe I'll send the U S. So I'm still figuring out races. Obviously we know with COVID it's hard to like really make plans for the future. Um, everybody's been asking me if I'm going back to bobsleigh and I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think it's on the horizon. I've 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 given up my winter, um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> me and the snow don't get along and honestly it was like a really cool experience like I loved it but I think also for me the thing about bobsleigh that was super enticing was the like I've never done it before mm-hmm. and I want to try and do something I haven't done before and so I've done it now so it's like I not maybe I got to go find another sport to go <laughs> to go to so you'll be a three sport athlete okay are, are there right. any women that have done three sports no, actually, now that we said that, I was like, I might have to really go and find something because that could be that could be a thing. That could, that be, could a be a thing. thing. Okay. Yeah, I, I that was a joke, but we might have to. I might have to actually <laughs> look into this. Because, <laughs> yeah. all right, well, can you think yeah. off top like what sport it might be? Well, or... What would I do? Nah. You should do like I, what is what's the WrestleMania something like WWE? What's the women? Is it WWE or E? That like Ronda Rousey is that one that like she went into? Nah, no. But I could Women's see you fight right? Ronda Rousey. I, <laughs> Real talk though, after um when I'm done with track, I want to learn MMA. Like that's okay. my like how I want to like stay fit, and I want to learn how to like fight, fight jujitsu, Muay Thai. All everything, karate. Oh, we might we might have a three sport woman here. I'm there not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Yeah, <laughs> guys, we're here with Felicia George. Please remember to like and share. Um. Oh yeah, Coach SW. I was looking at said make some history. I'm with it. It's Women's History Month mm-hmm. too, so let's do yes. it. And VJ VJ suggested ice hockey. There's a women's ice hockey league. Yes, there is. Huh. Yeah, but like hockey is like um, but the holy grail in Canada too. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want to go back to another winter sports. <laughs> winter. <laughs> I mean, if they give me like every type of hand warmer type of thing, maybe I'll come back. But <laughs> yikes! Okay, so so back to the track season and like 
you what what are your thoughts in terms of like the next couple of years do you see yourself like i'm for sure for sure like yeah. <laughs> we're going to Tokyo You're done, yeah. and then yeah <laughs> yeah because this even this was an extra year for you mm-hmm. yeah yeah um i honestly i don't know yet i really don't know like i really feel like this year could be my last year mm-hmm. but i also feel like I'm in this weird space, like, again, like, so I started working with a new coach and it's like, I'm starting to almost find myself in a different way on the mm-hmm. track. Um, and so like, there's that feeling of wanting to continue because you're like, well, I'm kind of touching into some new stuff yeah, right like now. You're having a rebirth. So, I, that's exactly what it feels like. It, yeah. I, it, to me, what it feels like right now is like, it's like I learned how to run track and I learned how to hurdle a way that like everybody told me how to do it. And now I'm kind of finding like, Felicia's way of doing it, and it feels so much more fulfilling, right. so much more mm-hmm. right. And so, and it's like the running when you think about like running, like when you were a kid, and you're like, yo, I'm gonna just, and you're like really in tune with it. That's what it's starting to feel like for me now. And you're like, well, now it's getting good. Do you leave it? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. So that doesn't right? sound like it's time to walk away. Not to me. But I know I'm also really interested in other stuff right now. So mm-hmm. I know if I do what I've been, but it, I actually think it's been helping with the like resurgence with myself is like i'm not like a hundred percent only track and field anymore right mm-hmm. and definitely for a lot of years that that's what it was but it's almost like i allow myself to have fun like hey i'm here in grenada and i'm on the beach almost every day you know what i mean like there was a point in time where i was like no i'm not allowed to do that i have to like be so super strict with myself so if i do continue and i i do think i want to um i will have other things going on but I always have, I always have stuff going on. Yeah, too. I was about to I'm- say, like, you're definitely <laughs> layered. Um, but I'm, I'm hearing a lot of what I think um, a lot of us athletes come into where it's like, you, you kind of go through a phase where it's like, you are what you do. And then you start mm-hmm. to figure out you're not what you do. Right. And so like talking about that rebirth and like, you know, well, there are other things that I'm interested in. There are other, you know, I know COVID 2020, my mm-hmm. life just like exploded. <laughs> Mm -hmm, (laughs) And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, what do I, what do I do here? How do I figure this out? Like one thing I learned is be ready for whatever. (laughs) So I enrolled in school, I'm taking grad classes and like really thinking about what life is after. And Mm -hmm. I think it's funny because we all know that life after is coming and we kind of sort of plan for it. But then when it, it's kind of on the horizon, it's like, oh, maybe I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. Um, right. So I'm kind of curious to hear like what your what the other things might be that if, if you um, care to share. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm i still figuring it out, but I'm just really been tapping into like a creative side of myself. So I've always done a lot of writing. So I think mm-hmm. I could definitely see myself writing and I do like poetry and that type of stuff. So I would like to explore that on a deeper level. Um. I studied biology in school. It's so funny. I actually started watching this show called Cosmos on Disney Plus. And I've literally like fallen in love with biology and science again. Like I've like, I think I had it so associated with school that I didn't even realize how much I loved it type of thing. And so I could definitely see myself going into um, healthcare, but not in a traditional sense, especially like as I'm like really, I'm a very, Naturey, like I was about to you know, say, I can from- see you doing like wellness <laughs> clinics yeah, on the beach somewhere. Yeah. We're like yeah. we're <laughs> poetry grounding. That's my cool vibe. Thank you, thank you. It's so funny because when I was in Grenada, uh, when I first came down, a few of my friends like messaged me and they're like, "You're never coming back." You're like, "You're gonna open a wellness center down there and then just be like giving retreats." I was like, "That can actually happen." So, um, I like I, I meditate. Like I'm really deep into spirituality. Um, so there's aspects of that that I definitely think I would be interested in exploring on a deeper yeah. level. Um, I can see you doing more TED Talks too. And I mean, I guess that kind of, that yeah. gives you a good you know look because the TED Talks. But I um, I think I've also been kind of rebelling <laughs> against anything that feels like what an athlete should do. That's You know what I'm saying? Surprising. That sounds so like right. <laughs> <laughs> so 
there's a part of me that's like, yeah, I could be a speaker, but like every athlete's a speaker. So yeah. like, there's a part of me that's like, but I, I think once I like get past this like transition point and I really get more secure in like what I want to do and uh, what I want to talk about, then I think I can step forward into that space again. And I, cause I think sometimes, and again, like I'm saying, look before it was like, sometimes we just do things out of expectation. And I felt like sometimes I would be giving talks and saying kind of what, what people what wanted to want hear. To hear. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah. like, yeah, work hard and be determined. And I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to give talks that don't really feel like true to myself or really feel like, you know, led from my heart, from my soul. Like it feel I, right now it feels to me like it has to be that. Yeah. And if it's not, and if it's that, it's going to impact the people it's supposed to impact on a deeper level. And if people don't like it, they don't like it. That ain't no problem. <laughs> I like that. I like, I, th- yeah. It's funny because I actually um, talked about that recently with my therapist where um, a little bit different from the traditional what imposter syndrome means, right? But um, mm-hmm. I, a perfect patty. I like to show up perfect and, you know, yeah. And I was talking about like doing speaking engagements and I was like, in a lot of ways I show up to these things and I feel like a fraud. And Mm -hmm. I was like, because number one, I'm an introvert. (laughs) So I Mm -hmm. actually have to like work myself (laughs) up to like work the room, interact Mm -hmm. with people, you know, then I'm worried about my speech actually falling on listening ears and like really being impactful and then on top of that on the inside on the inside I'm like a hot mess Mm -hmm. (laughs) here I am in therapy (laughs) but also here I am preaching this like yeah work hard do this I failed a lot but I I also won a lot too I'm right there with you (laughs) (laughs) you know and it's like is this really authentic is this really like you know and so like just kind of working through like, yeah, I do still kind of want to do the speaking thing, but I want to be, you know, as authentic as I can with it as well that like, yeah, it ain't all what it seems like. And like you, I mean, I, the traditional standing up in front of people, I'm done, 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 (laughs) you know, let's go on the beach and chat about it. Let's make an experience out of it. I'm I'm with it. But, um, Yeah, I definitely feel you on the speaking thing where I'm like, yeah, I feel like I'm showing up here and I'm giving this whole package and then I leave and I'm like, I'm exhausted from this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm showing up as my true self because I'm dealing with a lot. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like for me right now, again, as I've been in this space, it's been one, accepting my whole self. And so in that sense, also understanding that Sometimes things that can feel opposites can exist together at the same time, mm-hmm. right? That, and so you, that is a lesson for 2020 yeah. <laughs> that mm-hmm. I've been like, because you'll you'll be in conversation and it's like, well, no, it's this and this and this, and it's like, well, it could be this, but this could also but exist not- at the same time. Exactly. One doesn't necessarily exactly. negate the other. So yeah, yeah, totally there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I feel like sometimes. With our personality, we feel like, well, if I have doubt, that means I'm not confident or confident. Like, but it's like you. There's this weird way that both things can be in the same place, and it's fine. And just realizing that, like, same thing with situations. Like, everything is a little bit of a half truth mm-hmm. and a half a lie. Mm-hmm. And instead of always thinking it's only this and it's exactly like this, so allowing myself to like play in that space of being like along a line of all the extremes. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder how much yeah. of that is rooted in our athletics, right? Where it's like <laughs> black and right. white, win, lose, yeah. second, third, fourth, you know, like just kind of having yeah. lanes and places and how things work and like definitive schedules. And and then mm-hmm. it's like, but in life, ain't nothing inside the lines. <laughs> like it's right. really it's gray. True. It's, it's not true. perfect. Like, but it, it's. I'm super curious. Sorry, I think there's a delay. <laughs> there, pro- there probably is. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say, I'm super curious if other athletes from different sports have that kind of black and white feeling that track athletes have. Because I think with us, it's like, it's so clear the place that you're in. It's so clear the time that you're in. And so it's easy for us to be like, well, no, only first, second, and third matters. This doesn't matter. That like, we can really like create judgments very mm-hmm. easily. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering, like, if I was a basketball player, like, would that... Yeah 
what I have that same outlet. I just don't know. I'm I'm just curious. That's interesting. That is an interesting yeah. thought. I got to bring a basketball player on to have the conversation. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Bring, we we can have multiple people on here and have like a panel discussion. We might need to have a panel yeah. tea time about that. Yeah. Um, before we keep moving on, because I saw a couple of questions pop up and I like to show the people love for showing up. Um, mm-hmm. Again, like and share. Let's get some more people in here. Uh, VJ, VJ85 wants to know who's your coach? Um, he's from Finland. His name is Yanni Ratia. Um, yeah. <laughs> and um, let me just and tell you, I'm like... <laughs> Everything that Fel- this is Felicia, right? Yeah. Like straight up because I had just had Liam and she's yeah. like, let's go to dinner. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to get out the house. Let's go to dinner. And so we go to dinner and she's like, so I'm leaving. And I'm like, the F? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'm going to Finland. I was like, the what? <laughs> but That's she's what is definitely operate. like somebody like, no. I feel good about this. I've meditated yeah. about this. This is what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it's been it's been amazing. I mean, I'm a, I'm his only athlete, um, so that was definitely a big transition for me. Not having training partners. Um, that's the one thing, if anything, this year that I definitely miss, like being able to go to practice and just like kick jokes with people and whatnot. But it's been really amazing because the whole program has been based on me. I have had so much more autonomy. Mm-hmm. in my program this year literally us sitting down together and making the program together us really being like what's the best thing for me um and having like a holistic approach where like this year i remember i was like super fatigued and he was like if you need to take the week off like let's take the week off and to me and, like the athlete inside of me was like Hell no. like no way <laughs> that's not allowed <laughs> and so and we t- I took the week off. I did absolutely nothing. And I literally came out of the week, like, so refreshed. Like, the week after was amazing. And it was, like, it's just a total different way of training for me now than, than I have in the past. So it was in line. Yeah. I think um, it's funny because I had a conversation yesterday with um, some guys from the human, de- human performance development department over at Under Armour. And we were talking about, like, the culture – of training and how like we're in this mm-hmm. overtraining space where it's like the culture is like work 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 and it's like but no mm-hmm. rest is also just as important so and mm-hmm. they were talking about how like coaching is like kind of antiquated and so like wanting mm-hmm. to bring coaches up to speed on like diet nutrition mm-hmm. uh sleep rest active mm-hmm. recovery um mm-hmm. a lot of coaches don't necessarily believe in that so it's pretty cool to hear that your coach was like all right, we need some time off. Let's take the time off. Yeah. Even I just kind of feel like, I feel like sometimes coaches can take away a lot of the really beautiful things about the way someone runs naturally. And we, like training can like, and I I don't want to say, but training in general makes us feel like we have to go into this very specific box of this is what, how it is to run fast. And I think especially in the hurdles, I got really caught up in like, this is what a, a fast technique looks like as opposed to just doing, moving how my body wanted to move. Mm-hmm. And so I think sometimes the way I look at coaching now is helping an athlete to like tap into their full potential and to tap into, you know, allowing themselves to run freely as mm-hmm. opposed to like telling them very specific ways of how to run. Mm-hmm. You know, even like you think about like Michael Johnson is like an example that comes to mind where like, it wasn't like the traditional way of running and had his coach maybe tried to change it, who knows what would have happened, but it was like in the allowing him to like manifest his running, he was able to do what he needed to do, you know, type of that. That brings, I feel like that's like the perfect <laughs> transition of like, you and I have had conversations about like the mental space um, in competing. And um, I think neither one of us has any interest in going in coaching, but I would I would like to go into <laughs> mental coaching because yeah. I feel like that is um such a huge part of um competing more so than the training honestly and I think you're tapping onto some things where it's like allowing the athlete to be themselves in the space that they need to be in from every aspect of the training and the mental aspect um mm-hmm. 
So it's it's interesting to hear, and I can just imagine you like on the beach down there, visualizing and yeah. doing all the things. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like now you're in this program that's like, as you said, purely designed for you. Yeah. Um. So I just imagine that you're over there thriving in your um element over there. Yeah. Sensory no, deprivation it's... is great for athletes to use. Helps clear the mind and focus. Mm -hmm. I've done some float tanks before and they have been pretty dope. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's just so much that goes with the mental. And I feel like I'm totally revamping the way I think about things again. I, but I, I've had an idea to potentially do like a mentorship program for mm -hmm. like young athletes. And like you said, it's like, we've been in this for a little while and you kind of figured out some of the like things and, and also realizing that how much the mental has played a way bigger role than the physical. Because if I'm feeling confident, if I'm feeling, you know, good about my preparation, um, that has a bigger, a bigger role than what I actually did to get ready, you know? Yeah, because sometimes that mind will take your body to a place that you might exactly. not have been expecting or, you know, so yeah. definitely. Uh, let me see. I feel like I missed another question or maybe I didn't. Oh, no, I did. Being a winter summer Olympian, are you friends with Lolo Jones? Um, so I actually trained at LSU prior to that's right going to the Winter Olympics. So we were training partners for a little while, and then when I was out for the Winter Olympics, I mean, obviously she was on the U.S. team, but Bob says like a small circle, kind of like track in this in that sense. So you always see everybody. Oh yeah, so bobsled, bobsled. Is there a yeah? It's American. So Bob Sled is American. And the Americans, Americans always mashing up Americans something. Their own thing. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob Sled is the rest of the world, as with everything else. <laughs> Seriously? So only Americans yeah. call it Bob Sled? I mean, pretty much. Pretty much. Like, I think other people have adopted it just because, like, they've heard Americans saying it. But in general, the correct way to say it is Bob Sled. So you want to know and what's funny? This past what? week, my foundation, we had a panel. And we did mm -hmm. feature um, Asia Evans. She was a guest on the, the yeah. panel. And when we were writing up her bio, we did say bobsleigh. And then mm -hmm. I went back and looked at her bio and I went back to um, my board member and the graphic designer that I was working with. And I was like, no, her profile says bobsled. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if there's a difference, but it's literally just the Americans are the only people in the world that call this sport bobsled, but it's Pretty a bobsleigh. Much. Yeah. Okay, America always. <laughs> Y'all like, like to do your own thing. You like to separate yourself. It's cool. <laughs> oh, always mashing up a thing. Yeah. Um, you guys getting pretty Can I have... Go oh. ahead. I was gonna ask you about how training's been post post baby. Oh, I mean, maybe you've spoken about it already, but okay. Yes, I'm going to get Perdita's book. I love to support my fellow track athletes and their um off track sure. endeavors. Perdita was the like, I think trailblazer for women, Canadian women hurdles. So, um, uh, for sure. Track and field hurdlers. Cause I, I, I mean, I'm not a hurdler, but I definitely uh, remember Perdita. <laughs> yeah, no, but we've had, we've had men. So Mark McCoy in the eighties won a gold medal in Barcelona, mm -hmm. but Perdita was the first. So yeah, track and field, I see what you're saying. So not just hurdles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I yeah. I didn't mean um. I meant country wise too. Like not just in Canada was she an influence. Like we were oh, watching for sure. her okay, here yeah. in the states too. Like for across sure. the for world, sure. Perdita was a thing. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but training has been going really, really well. Um, yeah. So it it it's kind of the thing like. So last year I was like, oh yeah, I'm ready. I popped this baby out. I'm ready to go. And then, you know, the, the postponement came about and I was like disappointed about that. Cause it was like, okay, now we're extending this thing. I was, yeah. you know, which, you know, it worked out the way that it was supposed to. Um, but once we started training this year, I was like, oh, okay, girl, you needed yeah. this extra time. <laughs> yeah. This next kind of group. <laughs> you were confident last year. However, girl, mm -hmm. we are in a totally mm -hmm. different place. And I mean, 
to be fair, like I started training, I started walking three weeks after having him. And then I was back Uh on the grass, um, at about six or seven weeks. Um, Uh and like, I was peeing on myself in practice, (laughs) like (laughs) all the things that like, if you ever want to have yeah. a kid, talk to me because it's like all the things that nobody yeah. tells you about that I'm like, okay, I'm peeing on myself. I can't stop it. Oh, there's no yeah. in my bladder. Why do I feel like I'm peeing on myself, but nothing's really happening? Oh like, yeah, it, yeah. it was a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but this year, <laughs> no, it's it's much, much better. We actually, um, this past, thir- a week from today, actually, last Thursday, um, you know, we train at the same track with um, the Bailey Bunch, Tanja's group. Yeah. So we yeah. did a, when I was in college, we called it an inner squad meet. Yeah. Where, like, like, yeah. We basically run against each other. So I ran a 200, I ran 22.93. So I was okay. like, oh, okay, girl, we, we, yeah. we in there. And yeah. we, um, the four by four. Um, I ran against Gab. I don't even know what our, our official time was, but I ran against Gabby Thomas. Gabby Thomas was in the 200 too. Mm-hmm. I don't know everybody else's time. I only got my time. Mm-hmm. Track thing. I don't really care about it. Yeah, no, yeah, we yeah, just... <laughs> what I want, I cool. <laughs> I, cool. Thanks. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I think she probably ran like 22, seven or eight. Cause we, we, pre- we came down on the, it was yeah. uh, Gabby Thomas, Morla K then me than Ashley, who's actually my guest next week. Um, mm. But um, the four by four, she and I got the stick like pretty much even. And I have been like playing around with my 400. I don't know what it is. I know that mm. I go out hard, but for whatever reason, I've just kind of been chilling. And mm-hmm. so I kind of chilled That's behind totally her. For you. It's, yeah. Like, and, <laughs> and so all of the 400s that I ran last year, I, I did the same thing. And mm-hmm. it's like, um, obviously I can still do what I did before 22, nine is yeah. proof. Right. But I'm just working with a little bit of a different body. This is Natasha mm-hmm. 2.0 postpartum. Um, mm-hmm. but anyway, so we got over to 150 to come home where I sometimes make a move and I made a move and I was like, wait, hold on, girl. Where did this come from? <laughs> a lot of stuff in there. Okay. So, okay. but she ended up like pulling away from me. At the mm-hmm. end, but I was like, okay, girl, you need to get over this. Like, you got to get out hard like you're used to and you're going to yeah. be able to finish. Um, so it was a good, like, it, it, the whole thing served what it was supposed to serve for us because we don't have any competition opportunities. So we were like, we're going to create it for ourselves. We're here together. Let's do, Let's something. do something together. Yeah. So we're actually probably going to do some more of those. Um, but I am going to run at Texas Relays in a couple of weeks. So that'll be yeah. another barometer for where we are. So yeah, I'm actually going to, I'm probably going to run a 200 this weekend. They have some little mini meets here. I mean, it's more so going to be like a practice because there isn't any competition here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we might actually hop in, if I can hop in with some boys, I, we might do that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be But good. I'm excited to run it too. I haven't run a 200 in so long. So. Uh, yeah, Morla K is coming. They're coming the week after next. Are you um, having Morla K and at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be yeah. good. Uh, thank you, Mark McCoy, 1992, Barcelona. Guyanese born? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Everybody in Toronto is from it's, the Caribbean somewhere. Listen, yeah. The first time I heard Drake talk, I was like, wait, hold on. Where yeah. is <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's that's how, that's how people in Toronto talk we have our little Caribbean I see I but I didn't Caribbean. know until I heard Drake talk because otherwise yeah. to, to be fair like I know people from Toronto but I know that they're West Indian or Caribbean right so okay, the yeah. twang didn't really like you know it was just kind of like oh, I know yeah. you know but then yeah, when I heard Drake I was yeah. like hold on <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> yeah that's that's just Toronto things yeah um vj vj calling america out again america is backwards soccer instead of football their measurement yeah. track and field world champs when yeah. someone wins it i mm-hmm. you know i was actually talking about my, my cousin <laughs> this morning yeah i was telling a friend of mine uh my cousin is shaka his love and um i was like which he's not my blood cousin it's another caribbean thing but <laughs> everybody's your uncle and your auntie 
It's so funny. Actually, I've been down here and I've been introducing like people to my coach and I'm like, well, this is uncle, this is auntie that. And, I'm, and then he'd be like asking the like connection. I'm like, oh no, it's no, not no, my no. actual. That's uncle. not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my so funny. My mother like, and her auntie <laughs> went to school together. together. And he drove the car that took them to school. So that's uncle too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. Oh no, Drake trying too hard. Is his accent not good or? No, it's fine. Okay. I mean, I guess like you said, if you think that someone is trying to put on a Caribbean accent, but that's just the way all Toronto people talk. Yeah, I really appreciate Drake because he reps really hard for Toronto, and he like makes it known. And I feel like a lot of other Canadian artists almost kind of want to pretend like they aren't Canadian until they blow up, type of thing. So I appreciate Drake for that interesting interesting you love shaka his club yeah that's my pseudo cousin <laughs> family <laughs> so in that situation my grandfather and his father are best friends and okay. so he grew up yeah. with my um my mom and her brother so that's my family that's yeah, my cousin that's family yeah yeah 100 <laughs> just me uh, I'm trying to skim to see if we have any more questions. I don't think so. So we'll just keep the conversation going. Um, let's see. What else? What What did we not touch on yet? We well, I was going to ask again. I'm kind of on the motherhood stuff. But um, <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like there is a lesson that you've learned from motherhood that you're carrying into onto the track? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, scheduling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, yeah. The baby needs to be on a schedule. Time management over here, where, um, you know, before it was kind of like, you know, we would hang out at the track, practice mm -hmm. would be done. Yeah. We'd be, now I'm kind of like, okay, I got to go pick him up. Or, um, mm -hmm. I, my mom has him. I want to give her, give her a break. Um, mm -hmm. so I got to get my workout done in this time as opposed to, mm -hmm. Oh, I can, I have all the rest. So much time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, I can't necessarily take those breaks now. Yeah. Um, and then I find myself, like, bringing my structure from sport over to him, too, where, and then, mm -hmm. like, I have him, like, hitting baseballs and playing basketball. And, I love like, it. The boy I can't talk, it. but I'm like, come and, come and learn these things. <laughs> yeah you don't need to you don't need to talk to be able to do them things lay that foundation early <laughs> i'm like try everything we got to find some golf clubs for him yeah yeah I love it. so, so it, it's 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 been an interesting journey um we're we're good on sleep that was a struggle in the beginning but yeah i don't okay. that's the one thing that like i'm probably soft on other areas with him i was actually talking to sonia a little bit today because her stories have me cracking up um, yeah, but I don't play about the sleep. I'd be like, nah, bruh, you no. gotta sleep in your bed. <laughs> you go ahead. Yeah, we got a bedtime, although he's been kind of iffy with it this past week. But yeah, yeah, this, I guess the structure thing is the biggest thing where it's like, yeah, all right, we gotta stick to, to time here, right? I feel like, I, I mean, again, me just being curious about things. <laughs> and seeing other women who have had kids, because we've had a lot of women actually, as of late, have children, right? Man, 2019 in, and was a baby boom in track. <laughs> right? Right? And continue. But to me, I'm almost wondering if it gives a different perspective. I think, like, as an athlete, we're so, my life is track and field. The only thing that matters is track and field. Nah, 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 nah. And then you have a kid, and I would just assume that it would just be like, well, no, there's actually something <laughs> yeah more important more yeah important. absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah and I mean you know after before and after I had him I was just kind of like and my mom who's always like the 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 checking person like this what you want to do because you ain't got to mm -hmm. do it if you don't want to do it mm -hmm. um and so it was definitely like I've always wanted to walk away from the sport on my own terms and then yeah. now um being a mother it was just kind of like no matter how it turns out, I want to, again, walk away knowing that, like, I gave it my best. So I think, right. you know, in last year when the postponement came, that was sort of the disappointment because there was this thought of, like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do another year. 
but also like now if I don't get to do another year, this is not how I wanted it to end, you know? Like, so there's definitely, there's still that like, and some of like rewriting who I am, that rebirth that we were talking about earlier of like, just because I'm a mom, why, why not? You know? And then I think about childbirth itself and I'm like, girl, if you could go through that, what's a couple more 400s? <laughs> oh no. Did you freeze? I, we lost Felicia. She's going to call back in. You guys still there? Can you guys see me? Hear me? <laughs> I'm reading these, these questions. I'm sorry. Let, let me, while we get her back on the line, Charmaine Belmar, thank you. I'm going to have to pull this back up when we get her back on, on the line. Oh, she had texted me. She was frozen. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, you guys can hear me. Last week at Europeans, Tiff Porter got a bronze medal in 60 meter hurdles after coming back from giving birth last year. Yes. Um, and fun fact, our kids are just a few weeks apart. So it's definitely encouraging to see her killing it right now. Um, Ooh, this is a good question. I'm Dave gorgeous. I'm going to wait till she's back on the line to, to pose that question. Yes. Felicia will be back. We're going to get her on the line. All right, guys, just hang tight. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for being here. I guess we could use this time to share and like, right? <laughs> Roots in in Sauters, huh? Okay, I gotta do some um geography here. Let me texture. Let's see what's going on. Um, What's going on, Felicia? Come on back. Come on back. Remember to like and share. Oh, I want to say this. Makaya? Mungai? I hope I said that right. Hope I said that right. We both look alike. That we were just talking about we might be cousins. <laughs> We might be cousins. She is, she has Grenadian roots and so do I. My grandfather is from Grenada. So um, we might be related. Okay, here she is. Here she is. You there? You there? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, you there? You hear me? Yeah, yeah. My okay. wife, I got crazy. <laughs> I was like, I was like, nah, nah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, um, you were saying, I heard the last thing I heard you say is that was the disappointment. Can I, I mean. I mean oh, I mean. okay. <laughs> the disappointment. Sorry to go back. Like the postponement, like not being able to like, I, it was taken from me in a sense, right. as opposed to like yeah. being able to, to walk away from it how I wanted to. So thankfully. Things worked out where I am able to um, finish out. But I was I was also saying that like childbirth itself, <laughs> I think I shared my story. I told you kind of what imagine. happened. Yeah. 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 <laughs> where I'm just like, like, if I can go through that, what's a few more 400s in my life? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. Like perspective is different. Like, yeah. yeah. That's why it's good to do stuff that makes you feel uncomfortable and do stuff that like is hard because then other stuff is like, yeah. I ain't no big deal. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting because I can literally, I can honestly say that while I was in labor, I was actually like telling myself like, 
girl, you on the line in Rio. This ain't nothing. <laughs> like, so it's it's so interesting how like you can tap into other experiences to get you through other things. Uh-huh. Cause uh-huh. I literally, while I was waiting on that epidural, I there yeah, was some, yeah. there was some cuss words in there. It was it was game day. It was yeah, race day. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's hilarious. I love that. <laughs> so yeah. Um. All right. Wait before I. Thank you, Jeffrey, for the super chat. Really, really appreciate it. There was a question here from Gorgeous that I was like, I'm going to wait till you come back Uh to pose the question. What do you think the governing bodies can do to help athletes transition from the sport, whether they are transitioning because of injury, becoming mothers or retirement? I think this is a loaded but awesome question. What do you think? Yeah, there's a lot. Um... I think definitely helping with options for, I would say schooling, Mm -hmm. Um, but also I think providing workshops or educational avenues um, for athletes in terms of, you know, wealth management, that type of like stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And even just like stuff that can help people um explore different options um because sometimes it's like we really don't know what we want to do um so i would say that but then i would also say if there was an opportunity to help provide internships or anything that had helped people get a little bit of experience in testing the waters in different areas because i mean it's hard i mean obviously we're olympians and medalists and so you have that on your resume but sometimes maybe getting your foot in the door or getting the option and opportunity to get experience in something specific would be helpful. And especially if it's somewhere where it's flexible, where you said like, I'm still training and I, but I know I'm going to be done maybe next year and I need to figure something out this year. So, um, yeah. Does, um, Canada athletics have anything like that? So they just started. It's a thing called game plan. Okay. It's, it's good. It's good. They have, yeah yeah they have it's definitely like better than having nothing and um you know you can sit down with someone and kind of work out what you want to do help learn about networking um i just feel like in some ways a lot of these things are very um mm, textbook if that makes any sense and it's just like how how much real world application are you actually right right yeah and so they do have a lot of networking um, events that you can go to and like people from businesses would be there if you want to try that out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they have, they do have some workshops and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. I think, I think I would just want, if when I'm ready to transition, I would want um, like a list of people that I could contact Mentors. to help meant that's the that i think that's the biggest thing i i mean i think i mean obviously we're adults we you know and we have developed a lot of life skills but i think just having someone that i could call on someone that can maybe be like okay i know you know sport but you don't know business so let me give you a few da 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 type of thing you know yeah. so i think that's the biggest thing i would want to see yeah. um I, I think would be the most helpful actually yeah <clears throat> i agree and i think um like I know the USOPC has some some things in place for us, like um, and I've been utilizing them lately, where they have grant options for school or grant um, opportunities. Yeah. Um, there's also like they have partnerships with some schools where you could just go to school for free. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also working with someone on like my resume. <laughs> I've never had to do one of those. So like when I was yeah, when I was applying for grad school and they were like, so we need a resume, I was like, oh, oh. And yeah. but even yeah. to that, like understanding, because one thing that I've done is like minimize my experiences on the track. And it's like, but no, that's work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that, you know. Um, and so, but I do agree that um we need mentors and but I think a large part of the disconnect sometimes is even if those opportunities are available athletes have to take advantage of those opportunities and when they don't the funding for those things goes away because if the funding is being wasted then those who are funding don't want to waste their funds and but I I think a lot of people don't know about in the U.S. that is like a huge disconnect where it's like 
we're giving you guys these opportunities. These things are available to you, but you're not using them. And if they're not used, right. then they're going to go away. But I think it also needs to be a matter of them doing a really good job of letting every single athlete know what is available. Yeah. Because I feel like for me, I mean, if you're super proactive and you go out, you'll, you know, you can figure out what's what's there. But sometimes some people just don't know. Yeah. And so, you know. Yeah. Let me get to this question because she called me out. I missed the question. So Sydney McLaughlin is Allison Felix's new training partner. Sydney is a new face on the 4x4. So I'm wondering, does that create a negative or positive thing knowing that you're competing for a spot on the same team? Um, I don't even know that I look at it as a negative or a positive versus it just is what it is. <laughs> like, you know, because on the one hand, it's... um. I, I, the black and white thing that we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. I, I can't argue the fact that that girl went under the world record in the four by four, mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. can probably. I'm willing to bet she can probably split split forty eight seconds. Um, mm-hmm. So it comes down to like if we're gonna put the best four out there, who is the best four, regardless of what event they come from? And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, get out your feelings. <laughs> we're here to put the best team on the track. Um, so it really doesn't matter. So I don't know that it's, it's a, a a negative or, um, a positive thing versus she's talented. Like, I don't know what, and Mm -hmm. (laughs) it Mm -hmm. is what it is. I feel like what, what Americans do really well. And I I guess you guys just have to be so competitive. It's Mm -hmm. like, it's like you guys don't even really worry about your competitors as much as it's just like you just know you got to be good. And it's yeah. that like it's that kind of thing. It's like I can worry about this person. Oh, man, they're fast and whatever. But at the end of the day, I feel like Americans are just like, I know I have to be fast and I'm just going to be as fast as I can as opposed to like really focusing. And I actually feel like at least what I've seen is I see. I don't want to say friendships, but I feel like you guys are actually able, able to like be like closer with people because you're not necessarily seeing like competition as much as you're just like, I'm going to do what I need to do. Am I wrong in that? So, um, (laughs) (laughs) I will say, (laughs) I will say that I have, um, is transcend the right word. I have transcended the generations in the sport. Okay. Um, so I will say that we've gotten better at that and I'm, I'm speaking from my event. When I first right. came into the 400, we were not it friends. Like, we were not okay. cool. We were not. And it creates okay. a very interesting dynamic, right? Because especially in the 400 and the relays, we're like all year, we are competitors. And then we get to the yeah. world champs. We get to pin relays. We get to the Olympics. And we're supposed to be teammates, get on the podium, yeah. smile, and act like we all like each other. And oh, okay. yeah. all year, we've been trying to bust each other's heads because- yeah. I'm trying yeah. to get on this podium. I'm trying to make this team. I'm trying to, you know, um, yeah. so it definitely makes for a very um, interesting dynamic, mm-hmm. dynamic between us all. But I, I will say um, the last few years, it's gotten a lot better. Um, mm-hmm. And I think for me personally, I can speak from my emotional lit- maturity mm-hmm. for me personally has had a lot to do with that, where it's just like, what's for me is for me. What's for you is for you. I know you're right. working hard. I'm working hard. It is what it is. Um, going back to here he comes. Yay. <laughs> My mom grabbed him. I'll have him come in before we sign okay. off. Um, but going back to what you said earlier about the the USA thing where it's like, it's the thing that so many people love and hate about how we do yeah. things in the US. Cause it's like, yeah. we have so much talent. We have three spots for every event. Mm. you don't know what's going to happen at the trials. Yeah. And so there's yeah. like, this person is, I, I think 2016 was the best example where, uh, or was it 2016? Yeah. Where Kenny Harrison's the world record holder. Like yes. she didn't make the yeah. team at trials. And then she goes to London the next week and breaks the world record. And then That's everybody's like, Oh Lord, how you leave the world record yeah. holder home? She has to go. And we, yeah. everybody in the U S was just like, <laughs> She didn't show up at trials. What do you mean? This isn't even a conversation. Like that it is what it is. That's the rules are the rules are the rules are the rules. So that's the one thing about team USA where in that aspect, we really like 
for the most part, for the most part, because, you know, there, there have been some areas where it gets sticky and politics and this and that. But mm. <laughs> it's like if you didn't show up when you were supposed to, that yeah. is what it is like that. That is very much so like the line drawn in the sand. So, yeah. Yeah. But it would be, I mean, it would be difficult to think of a different way to do it because it's just you guys have so much people like how would you decide who and who who goes if you if you didn't just do like nationals and top three on the day It'd be interesting i don't know i yeah, I, that's what I, I, I don't even want to be a part of that decision making process <laughs> yeah because... that would be way too hard because you could argue there's so many ways and so many different people you could argue for in any given year mm -hmm. and then if you put it strictly on time you know people could go to any meet and have day stuff looking any kind of way. So, like, this is the yeah. perfect example, VJ VJ, because I was actually training with Veronica this year in 2008. I was training with Coach Brahman. I don't, Felicia, I don't know if you remember this. Um, I think she placed fourth so. at, at the trials in Jamaica, but mm -hmm. Jamaica has a rule where the first two spots are, and, and I this the, some people call it the VCB rule. Mm -hmm. apparently it's been on the books ever since but jamaica has a rule where the first two spots are um those Guaranteed. are your spots and yeah. then the third spot is discretionary mm. so and shelly came third at nationals that year i don't remember if she came third that year yeah oh. she did come third she did come third oh, so they were gonna leave her at home mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. And, wow. and look yeah. at what she left yeah. behind or is still doing actually okay. even now yeah. postpartum as well so whoa yeah that's the thing and that's the thing about sport it's like the beautiful thing about sport is the fact that you got to show up on the day and it's about it's about a competition it's not about what you've done in the past it's not about your personal best da, 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 da. so and you can't predict it because when you're standing on the line and whatever somebody's running the pass, it doesn't matter because it's what we want to do today. So, yeah. Cry, cry. Good old, good old track and field. <laughs> good old track yeah. and field. Oh, um, how did you guys break the ice? Was there a conversation between the 400 group or did it just naturally get better? It just naturally got better. It just, I don't, I don't remember there being like a, um, and, and, to be fair, um, when I came into the 400 at the time, I was, and I guess everybody kind of goes through feeling like the young buck on the block, but <laughs> the block was hot and I was like a solid two, three years younger than the hot. <laughs> Yeah, and so yeah. I I was that, you know, girl coming in where it was like, who is this young chick? She thinks she, they, you know, yeah. um, but there were a couple of girls that, like I said, to be fair, there were a couple of them that were like, like, I'll never forget. Um, Paris was my first um, golden league. It wasn't mm -hmm. even the diamond league. Agent yeah, myself. Yeah. And you really got in early. <laughs> Paris Ooh. was my first golden league meet. And um You've run in Paris at the Diamond League, have you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were walking out to, this was after my junior year of college. Um, so we're walking out, you know, the call rooms are under the stadium. And mm -hmm. so like we're in the call room and I'm like, damn, this is loud as hell. <laughs> like I'm thinking That's all of these things. Right? <laughs> and then we walk out to the track and they had these, um, I don't even know what you call them, but they had these things that they would like bang together. And it was just so loud. And I, I don't know yeah. what I was definitely in a trance. Whatever the trance was, it was enough for Dee Dee Trotter, my competitor, to tap me on my shoulder and say, don't look in the crowd. You got this. Like, it was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there were, you know, you some of them that life. were, because <laughs> clearly I was like lost in it, like, yeah. Is this? Yeah. <laughs> but she did oh. stop me and and tell me that. Um, but other I mean, we didn't really back then it was not we were not like friends or but it it has um it has changed. Yeah. Um VJ VJ coming through with the fact Shelly came second, Sharon Simpson was third, Karan was first, okay. but people were saying Shelly Ann Frazier should stay at home because she was inexperienced. Yep, remember yeah. that. Remember that. 
I remember that. <laughs> Guys, we got 40 people in here, 41 people in here. Okay, that means we're having good conversation here. Keep sharing, keep yeah. liking. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me scroll up. You got any questions? You got anything you want to talk about? Let me I'm I'm trying to talk and man the the um, chat and make sure I'm not missing any questions at the same time. I feel like I had a question before we got cut off, but now I forget. Um Uh, it only matters who's ready on that day. On any given day, we have a talented four by four pool, regardless mm -hmm. of who is in it. Facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what the U.S. like. Y'all really can't really go wrong with whoever you choose. <laughs> it's it's so, truly our blessing and our curse. And, whoever gets to stay home. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's. I I had to learn the art of not getting in my feelings about it or separating my because you know I had a pretty public 2017 relay experience that mm -hmm. <laughs> I was okay. like in the moment I really had to like step out of myself and like you know as the individual we're like what but it was like team before individual but after the right. fact it was like hold up now <laughs> yeah boy. it's hard like we said before like you, you like obviously you're working hard you're connected to your performances sometimes in a certain kind of way and so they yeah. can feel so when you both going to trinidad to mash up the place you made that promise both of you we <laughs> well listen, listen carnival is canceled this year so <laughs> what the i don't know the next trinidad carnival i will be there trinidad carnival and now i need to do a juve in grenada okay so like a juve juve in grenada so i'm i'm there for 2022 2022 Listen. for sure I yes think, liam well, will definitely be in his kitty mask <laughs> around the savannah yep <laughs> did i tell you i was thinking about doing a soca song hold on i tell you about this what no <laughs> spill the tea <laughs> spill the tea <laughs> honestly i've just had it in my mind i'm like yo i just want to be a one-hit wonder soca artist and i just want to have one big soca song and then just use that as my like, yeah, we'll yeah, go yeah. to like Trinidad, co op over dinner. You know, before. and I feel like you and Michelle should do it because y'all both have like the earthy meditation oh, vibes could, and could. like, yeah, yeah. So I was local when I when I got down here. I was like actually hitting up to people who had studios and stuff. I was like, I'm in Grenada. I want to make my soca song in Grenada. But then like I didn't. But that's still on my mind. <laughs> so don't do worry. It. I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get my soca song. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get someone to hook me up with Michelle. We'll do the song. And then we can just use that song to go to every carnival we need to. Well, I'm with good. it. I'm with it. <laughs> so we're going to be chipping down the place. Okay. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> I thought it was kind of sad being down here. And obviously with COVID, I was like, man, like no fats, no soca, no, like, I feel like I didn't get the full, and especially Christmas in the Caribbean. Have you been, a, have you spent a Christmas in the Caribbean before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's dope. They're playing parang outside, bottles, barefoot. And it was just like, I thought I was going to get that. And then obviously really? COVID. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, America, Texas, you know, it's like COVID <laughs> isn't a thing here. So yeah. <laughs> I've been inside, but like, what has it been like down in Grenada? Okay. I can't lie. I've actually had like a really good experience because it's been very minimal. So only thing is leading into Christmas time, they changed the curfew to 8 p.m. So that was like really, really limited. Restaurants were closed during that time. But that was maybe like a two or three week period. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they moved the curfew to midnight and we were masked inside. But other than that, everything's open. Okay. So I Who like, you can know. How did we meet? You know what? Me, the, where I remember was Zagreb. Zagreb. Yeah, that's what I remember too. But I feel like I was when, seeing you on the circuit forever. Yeah. But Zara yeah, was yeah. like the first time that we actually like, me. hey girl, oh wow. And we bonded on carnival. Sister. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like once we started talking, I was like, yeah, I'm like that. No, I like that. So, <laughs> but yeah, Zagra for sure. Zagra. What year was that? Was that like 20? That's what I was trying to think. 16. 15 or 16? It might have, it was 16. It might have been 16, 16. 15 or 16, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
what are your initial conversations like during relay camp, especially after a competitive trials? Uh, they love this relay. Yeah, they love right the relay talk, right? <laughs> the relay competition. Honestly, there's not really much co- conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I guess I should explain, and you can probably, I'd be interested to hear how Canada's um, camp goes, really? because yeah. relay camp isn't what you're think probably what you're thinking it would be. Yeah. Relay camp is very much so like you're there with your coach, you're training, yeah. and then there's like an hour or two out of the day that we come together. And especially for the four by four, like we practice yeah, the day yeah, before. Yeah. You know, but for the four by one, you know, they're practicing handoffs and stuff. So they definitely have more conversation. But otherwise, for the four by four, we're just like, all right, what time is practice? Okay, I'll see you there. (laughs) All right, I'm going to look you in the eye. You know, if I'm struggling, slow down. (laughs) Like, you know, but it's it's like regular practice. (laughs) It's essentially a training camp where you do some exchanges occasionally. Yeah, no, um, it, that's basically it. Relay camp is a part of training camp. Like if you're there yeah. for training, but the relays, it's mandatory to be there. Otherwise, everyone else is like, if you want to come, great. If not, sure. we'll see you at sure. the games. Yeah, you can go. You can do your camp somewhere else. Which is interesting. Well, I it wasn't mandatory for us because in 2016, I did my camp in Baton Rouge mm-hmm. before, and then I ran the relay. But I, I'm kind of like a, I'll hop on and help y'all. <laughs> Wait, so Canada didn't have a relay camp? Like y'all didn't have to be. We, I'm, I'm just thinking about that. We, I didn't have to go, but I, that's the thing. Is like, I don't know. I just usually do my own thing. I'm very clear about like my hurdles is my main thing, and if y'all need help in the relay, I'll come in and help that type of vibe. Let me tell so. you something. If you don't show up to relay camp, you ain't on the relay in Team USA. But that's the thing. Yeah, like I feel like we don't have the numbers to say like, it's like the people who are the best are the best. Mm -hmm. And there's four or five of of people who are running. To be honest with you, I don't even think, and I don't even think Allison could pull that muscle of like, I'm not coming to relay camp. And yeah, it makes sense. You you can be the place. We have someone who's... (laughs) But let me you know, also we'll just say this because I feel like people will take that and make it. Allison is also not the type of person that wouldn't like. Would, uh, Allison yeah. is the type of person like, okay, this is a requirement. This is what you're asking me to do. I'm gonna do it to to prove yeah. that, you know. But yeah, I I don't see you. I yeah. mean, I could be wrong, but nah. Yeah, I love it's just because we have we have less people. So red solo and roti. <laughs> well, I saw you have written about. Rivers, he said something about Rivers and Tanya Lock. I was like, yep, that's Grenada. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, when are you running a 400? Um, it, it, late April. Late April. What are you going to do at Texas Relays? Two again? 200. 200 and 4x4. Two hundred and a four by four. I was wondering if NCAA meets were going to allow um, pros to race this year. Mm-mm. So, because because the NCAA has their like their bubble, they have COVID under control. They they yeah. have like a bubble, so allowing the pro athletes into it would um, kind of mess yeah. with the bubble. So, yeah. Well. Anybody come through with the questions? Exactly. Us Brits need another 49 runner. We have loads of 50 and 51, but to be fighting for gold, we need another 49. Now Christine has retired. The U.S. is a tough team to beat. Yeah. I feel like you guys are like, you got that 4 by 4 pretty locked down. <laughs> you know, it's, so. it's funny, right? Because sometimes I, I go back and I watch our races and it's kind of terrible to say, but it's kind of facts. Because when yeah. I'm in it, I can't really, like, I just be like, okay, she's coming with Just go, thing. yeah. All right, don't mess this up. Just run, run, yeah. run. <laughs> but then yeah, when I yeah. go back and watch, I'll be like, girl, y'all were way <laughs> Yeah. You could have jowled if you wanted to. But, for sure. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then how... Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> um what um so how has pandemic quarantine all that stuff been for you ah 
asking. It's been fine for me in the sense that I'm an introvert anyway. So it was like, oh, I don't need to go nowhere. Um, I actually got on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> I got on a plane for the first time a couple weeks ago. I went down to Miami for my good girlfriend's baby shower. Mm-hmm. It was the first time I've been on the plane since March 9th. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know, it'll be two, three times a month that I'm getting on planes. And mm-hmm. I, I was just like, so the break from that, I was like, this is actually cool. Cause you know, traveling yeah. too, it's like, you got to recover from the travel. I swell up and all that yeah. other stuff. So, um, but my mom's been here helping me with my son. My brother's also been down here quarantining. So I've, I've had my community, my village, of course, mm-hmm. Liam's here. So having them to help me with Liam as well. But I've also been like, I like my girlfriend sometimes will be like, so let's go have drinks or let's do it. And I'm like, okay, but it's got to be outdoors. <laughs> like you're like, oh, oh, the call. like <laughs> I am like, what did the CDC say? And even sometimes mm-hmm. the CDC six feet, that's not enough. It should be 12 feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you were playing. Ah. Yeah. I've yeah. been very much so like very like quarantining. Like I just mm-hmm. stopped wearing my mask outside like at practice and stuff but like I was wearing a mask at practice if I got too close to anyone I was Mm. pulling it up and like yeah I've been Mm. very like keep COVID away from me that's Um, good yeah yeah. so I was so I was in Finland training and Mm. then I actually had a flight booked already I was going to go home for a recovery day like back in March and for a recovery um, day Recovery week, sorry. I like I was gonna spend like oh maybe God, ten days. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Recovery okay. week. And um it was the day that Trump announced they were closing the borders. Like this is before we like COVID was becoming a thing. Yeah. So anyways, I flew home and then I got stuck. Like I obviously by the time I was getting ready to leave, everything was like really shut oh, so down. It wasn't planned. No. Me ending up in Toronto, it wasn't, no. Oh, okay. I thought I had a whole I had a whole trip. There's like a northern part of um, Finland called Lapland that I was supposed to go to right after my recovery week uh, or build a good part of the recovery um, and go. I was like, I'm going to go see the northern lights. I'm going to go da, 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 da. That whole trip got cut in half. Um, so and I ended up staying in Toronto. But like you said, like I was staying at my dad's house and just I guess kind of feeling like I re- was reconnecting with family and not having to be on a plane every single day not having to I actually I actually took a whole month off when I got home after they I think after they announced announced you know what, I kind after of they announced took, the I remember yeah. I called the two I can't remember if I called or texted him and I was just like I need to process this so mm-hmm. I'll let you know when you see me and I think I took like yeah. two weeks of like absolutely mm-hmm. nothing which I think yeah. we kind of underestimated that like mentally I think we all needed mm-hmm. to like process mm-hmm. like what the mm. hell does this mean? Because you're just saying postponed. Mm. Oh, what? Yeah. To, like we said, we're used to black and whites. And it was like, yeah. postponed. What was crazy when? was the Canadians, <laughs> the Canadians, before they had postponed it, the Canadians had Shout said, Shout out to Canada. Because Canada, Canada the pulled the move. Like, I don't think <laughs> yeah. they would have postponed yeah. if Canada didn't you say. Think so? where, I, I, I really do oh, think man. so. Yeah. Because. Now imagine being Canadian and being like, well, damn, they're going to have a look and I can't go. <laughs> I was pissed. Canada pulled the oh, ultimate on, power move. I, I yeah. really think that was like what did, because the announcement literally came like a day after Canada was like, nah, our athletes are not going. And I remember mm-hmm. if, and you, you tell me, because I don't remember um, London. So you might, you might be able to fill in the gaps here for me because Leading up to the um, postponement, um, my training partners had started talking about it. Like, hey, have you heard about this virus over there? Like, it's it's really mm-hmm. serious. Like, I think they're going to postpone the Olympics. And I was like, child, let me tell you something. The Olympic Games is a billion dollar production. Ain't yeah. nothing postponing, canceling, nothing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. the media has a job to do. It's not that serious. In 2008, they said the air quality was bad in China. They put a little mm. sulfur in the clouds, made it rain. It was clear as day. Mm. Rio, they said it was Zika. I ain't seen not yeah. one mosquito while I was in, in Rio. It, yep. It's not yep. going to be, it's not that serious. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to remember like, there was something for London. 
I'm yeah, like there, I'm sure there was some controversy for yeah. London, but there's yeah. always there's always something, right? And so I was just like, COVID is just this. This is this is the 2020 thing. This is the Tokyo thing. But yeah, it, no big deal. We'll be going. No there's no deal. way they're gonna postpone. And then Canada said, <laughs> "We not going." I was like, "Nah, yeah. dog. This is a real thing." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was really like, and the thing is, even when just the initial quarantine, when they were like two weeks or whatever, they were telling us initially, and you're like, but then, you know, everything, a month, a month, a month, a month. But yeah, when they initially said, at least we didn't have to sit with it too long. Because like you said, it was like within a day or two, the IOC called it. But I was really in my feelings. I remember my friend said that to me and I was like, <laughs> you know. Like you had to, ver- okay. I'm sure you had to verify it for yourself. Like, nah, you're yeah. Lying. yeah. Yeah, and then because then it was out in the news first, and then I went to check my email, and I had an email from Team Canada saying we were tr- like trying to make sure you guys saw this first. You know what? I do like, remember hearing that like a lot of Canadian athletes were upset that like they heard about it in the media know. before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, but I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that was that one hurt. To Canada, y'all pulled the ultimate move. I really think. <laughs> That that was like the, because there there are a few countries that like how do you have the Olympics without and you got to remember Russia's out right so that's a mm. big one that's out so then Canada and the United States you have to have yeah. the Olympics with those two teams so yeah. Trump was gonna send us there to he he don't care about no, COVID but, but <laughs> <laughs> when Canada was like nah we out yeah it was just it was just a matter of time and so yeah. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> so. But either way, and then like you said, because I kind of felt the same way in terms of training. Like I obviously I was with my coach last year was my first year with him. And I felt like I was ready, but then you like get that extra year and you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I needed All this right. time. <laughs> yeah. We needed this time yeah. to gel together. Mm-hmm. And then I think mm-hmm. too, it's it's pretty cool that like he came down there to Grenada with you. Like that, like this man loves, he loves Grenada. <laughs> He's ready to move down here. It's so hilarious. And I've been giving him like a full good eating experience. He's having saltfish and, and bakes with by my aunt and he's getting breakfast and you know, all of that. He's having the real thing. Yeah. I most certainly can see mosquitoes. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you spent a couple of summers in Trinidad and Jamaica and you Mosquitoes working... here? When I was talking about the mosquitoes in um Rio. I was like, I ain't oh. see <laughs> Yeah. 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 Um, Wait, when was the last time you were in Trinidad? Man. It's been a while. Actually, I went to Trinidad when I was pregnant. We went down in, a- I think it was like April. Yeah, because it was like, I went to Trinidad. We visited yeah. my grandparents. And then I came back from Trinidad and I was like, okay, my belly is starting to show. Yeah. Let me call my sponsor and tell them like, like <laughs> so funny. I'm not running. I come to practice every yeah. day. You guys didn't even, I think you probably like, it took me a little while, but I was like, I, I, cause you were coming off of an injury. So I yeah. was just like, is she still hurt? Like, I'm like, but then eventually I was like, I think she's pregnant. But we yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like trying to wear the big shirts and like, yeah. and I think it was like up to 12 weeks. I was able to keep up with y'all. And then I'll never forget. It was one day we were doing some hundreds. The hundreds. <laughs> That's what gave it away from me, actually. Because <laughs> we were doing like, some hundreds, be- and y'all beat me off the line in a way that I was like, "Wait a minute!" Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked over to D two, and I was like, "I think it's time." Because <laughs> D two yeah. knew he knew all of, him and Bruce knew all along. Um, yeah. But you guys, I hadn't. No. But that same day, even if we, I maybe got off the line for you, you were still like with me for like the later ones. Yeah. And D two was like, I and I remember he said he's like Tasha should not be with you, and I was like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, she went to four hundred, she should be with me. But then I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> hold up, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. D two is good for that too. Like read what? between the lines. Like what are you trying <laughs> yeah. to say here that you're not saying? <laughs> right. I was like, what? I'm like, she was the four. Oh. Wait. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I, and I remember I was like super conscious about like, don't turn this way or like keep your shirt or like trying to suck. Yeah. My, it, it was a whole thing. I definitely never noticed size wise. It was just the like lack of workouts that was like, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> is she really running this summer? I'll never yeah. forget. Um, one of the girls came up to me and she was like, she said something like, um, are you running this year? I was like, why would I not be running this year? And she was like, aren't you pregnant? And I was like, mind your business. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Like, like <laughs> no, I'm, I'm running next week at Texas Relays. It was so, so, something like that. And I was just in my yeah. head, I was like, you are the worst liar. Yeah. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. That's hilarious. Oh, oh actually, yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. The four huh? by four that y'all ran on this weekend or whatever, who ran on that? Like, who do y'all have in the group? Olivia? Who ran on that? You know what's crazy? Olivia? <laughs> Again, that individual wow. thing. I don't know. Because, so, <laughs> I sound terrible. Because it was two mm-hmm. teams. And then I wasn't really concerned with, like, which which was which. Like, I was just like, who am I taking the stick from? More like, hey, okay, cool. Because once they oh, cut y'all in. Mixed. Oh, y'all mixed. Y'all mixed. Yeah. Once they cut oh, in. Oh, I thought you I could, did. Yeah. You're trading. Trade versus trade. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So, I, I, I couldn't tell you, like, who was on what team? Like, I just know that I took the stick from Morlake and I ran mm-hmm. against um, Gabby Thomas. Yeah. Okay. I thought you you guys were doing like their group versus mm-hmm. your group. No, nah, we don't. We don't. Um, we're not even know. like that. Even for um, <laughs> even for um, Texas relays, I'm probably gonna run the relay with them. Um, okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then um Javon actually had to run a leg too because um okay, just for like yeah. Yeah. So it was you know, he just he jogged okay. like forty nine yeah, yeah, yeah. fifty point, I think. So anywho, let me tell my mom to send Liam in here so he can come yeah. say hi and we'll that. wrap it up unless there's anything else you wanna talk about. Oh, I like this. I, I do want to do a, a children's book series, but yes, I I'm, definitely I'm, would. I'm trying to um work on not um putting too much on my plate right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Oh no, I did want to get to this question. Gorgeous always comes through with the good questions. I think mm-hmm. you both come across very authentic. What advice would you give your future retired selves? <sighs> wow. Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah. I would say the things that I'm learning to live by is um, having a deep seated trust in myself and um, leading with like what feels good and right for me, as opposed to, um, you know, whatever is in the market or whatever is going on and seeing how much more fulfilling that is to be more in more alignment. Um, and how things come into your life when you are in alignment. I think, you know, it's easy. Maybe you don't think like, I gotta, Ooh, like you leave track and you're like, how can I make money and how can I do whatever? But it was like, I think I really want to make sure I'm going to keep myself true to who I am and what is important to me and then let things come to me based on that and not try to force things. I like that you said that. Cause you said something earlier that I wanted to say this, but I'll, I'll say that, but we'll talk offline because I think that's very true about like being in your authentic space and like working on who you are. And it's amazing to see how things fall in line for you. And I'm definitely in that place where it was like, I had a girlfriend, um, you know, uh, last year, right. Like 20, it's 2021 now. Um, yeah, everybody knows now I'm a single mom. Yeah. So obviously like, mm-hmm. 2020 started off with like a bang (laughs) where and Mm -hmm. there's one thing that my girlfriend told me that I was like man like throughout the process she's been right where winter always turns to spring and Mm -hmm. so like it was a really and it's still in some ways is, is a hard thing to face but like I've really been in this space of like okay let me work on me this happened to me, but let me figure out what it is. You know, let me take responsibility of what it is that I can take responsibility for. Let me change the things that I need to change. Let me go back to school. Let me do the, Mm -hmm. and it's so crazy to see now, like a full year later, the things that are coming back to me that I'm like, oh my gosh, (laughs) like Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm, Even just mm-hmm. a few months ago, I felt like I was like floundering, like, oh my God, oh my God. Mm-hmm. And now it's just kind of like, oh, things are working out. It's it's okay. It's like, you just keep yeah. your head down, keep the faith, things will work out. But yeah. as far as advice to myself, I actually had a mm-hmm. meeting right before I got on here with you. And I, it's so funny because again, speaking of like sitting in your truth and like, in the meeting, I was kind of called out and I was like, I appreciate being called out (laughs) right now because this is growth and this is what I needed to hear. And, and I think again, something that's rooted in being athletes and probably also rooted in being Caribbean. You and I have had this, this conversation before where it's like perfectionism is a thing. Like Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I brought a 90 home from school and my father was like, but it's not a (laughs) hundred. It's a, A, but it's not a (laughs) hundred, you know? What happened to the rest of the answer? What happened to the rest of the <laughs> You know? And I, so okay. <laughs> I was called out in a way that he was like, um, the guy that I was talking to, he was like, you're just waiting on perfect to happen and you just got to do it. Like, what are you asking me to do? You're you're trying to present this perfect thing to me. And, and I was just like, I just sat back and I was like, mm-hmm. you're right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like you mm-hmm. are absolutely right. And so the advice to myself is like nothing has to be perfect. Like mm-hmm. you just show up as your authentic self, as your best self because mm-hmm. that that's the thing too. Like if you're always striving to be your best self, you're always growing, you're always in a space of, you know, showing up even better, but today this is my best self and I'm going to show up Mm -hmm. as her and like be graceful to myself that, you know, yeah, next year, my, my best self might be even better than today, (laughs) but I'm always striving for that. But I'm also like present and, you know, letting go of like wanting to be perfect. Cause if you waiting on perfect, it's never going to happen. And so like I, he called me out about an hour ago and I was sitting there like received, (laughs) I'm not even mad at it. I'm not embarrassed. And I told him, I was like, you, you are, you right. Thank you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear that. that. Even I would say, um, learning how to, um, uh, I don't want, I want to say that kind of see the positives and the negatives, right? So in the parts of ourselves that we think aren't perfect, Mm -hmm. but learning how to like, take whatever messages or energy we're supposed to get from that and use that to our advantage as opposed to saying like this part of myself isn't allowed to be here type of thing yeah so um i think it's interesting that you use the word parts too right (laughs) guys so me and felicia could go on and on and on (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we don't we don't usually talk like track stuff this is more the stuff that we yeah. vibe on um because something came up in therapy a few weeks ago when and it actually going back to the same conversation where I was like you know I feel like I, I'm I'm kind of being fraudulent in some of you know uh-huh. the ways that I show up and she was like you know we're all made up of different parts you know uh-huh. like how you show up as a sister a mother a daughter, a friend, the athlete, Mm -hmm. the this, like those are all parts of you. And so just because Mm -hmm. you show up differently as an athlete versus how you show up as a mother doesn't mean that you're a fraud. Just because you've shown up to this speaking engagement to tell your story as authentically as you can, (laughs) even though on the inside you're feeling like whatever, whatever, that's a part of who you are. But this part of you over here is still... You know, you have these different parts that then make you whole. And so also going the layer on top of like, this can exist with this, Yep. <laughs> you yep. know, like exactly. the duality of things. Um, so yeah, it, <laughs> we could go on and on and on. Yep. Wait, can I just on. give a, a whole next aside? So you talked about being in therapy and I, just because I started therapy this year as well, I've done with two different people, but how, mm-hmm. was this your first year? No. So I've done mostly like sports therapy stuff. Like this is the yeah. first time that I got into like therapy. Like yeah, I need to deal with Tasha 
Um, yeah. not the, and, and even the sports therapy was cool in that, um, I was able to transfer a lot of that to Tasha stuff, personal life, but, mm-hmm. um, this, this has been a definitely a different experience of like, mm-hmm. we're not talking about track. We're not talking about like yeah. how I get my mind right on the track. This is like, I got mm-hmm. some stuff to mm-hmm. deal with. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So. I would, but my I would argue that it's important to do this type of therapy to be your best self on the track. And I, in the past, when I have worked with sports psychologists, I actually didn't like the fact that it was always like, "Well, what's our race plan? How do we want to approach the race?" And it was like, I'm like, yeah, but there's some, there's a deep seated perfectionism in me that wants to, so like, you know what I mean? That's what we got to talk about, not yeah. like this other stuff. And And so now that I'm in um, my program, I have learned that there is science out there that says that your athletic performance can is tied to your mental health. Um, So there, (laughs) you know, a lot of us have felt like we and and in some cases we probably cover up some things with our athletic prowess, Um, but it can very much so affect your um, athletic performance. And that's one of the main reasons why I want to, or one of the many reasons I should say, I want to move into the the sports counseling um, space Mm -hmm. because I I think in our community, the black community, the Caribbean community, (laughs) and then the athletic community, mental Mm -hmm. health is taboo. And it's like, but Mm -hmm. it's such a big part of, what we do and who we are and so I mm-hmm. definitely want to be um one of those vessels to destigmatize that and really help us to get to our best selves on and off the field mm-hmm. and I feel like for a lot of us it's just like just having a space to again just speak your truth anyhow without feeling like I'm going to be judged or I'm going to be whatever and then also just having someone to reflect back to you because sometimes when you're in your head it's just here 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 boy but when you get head is a right? Thing. <laughs> right like you do create a whole situation in your a head but sometimes you say it out loud you say it out what. loud it, it's funny because i've i've caught myself several times talking to my therapist and i'm like wow as i say this out loud this sounds really crazy <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> nah, that's not really it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or she'll she'll pivot it back to me like, okay, is that real? Or have you made that up mm-hmm. in your head? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yes, yes, you're right. And I, I will, this is another inspiration of why I, I went into grad school. All of my experiences up to this point in therapy was with a white man. I had one um experience with a black man but it was all males and this time yeah. around like I made the effort to find a black female and it was hard number one to find her <laughs> but number two like some days we're sitting in therapy and she would literally just be like girl that was a whole lot <laughs> and I'm like mm-hmm. right you telling me and I'll, I'll forget that I'm in therapy because it's like right we're literally just having that conversation so that um I I I get geeked out about this stuff because it's like I, it's really a space that like I don't know that 10 years ago I would have been as passionate about it as I am now. So it's interesting to see like and even if like COVID or my breakup or whatever would have been the thing to like push me into this where I'm like, no, I'm excited about this. My family, my mom and my brother make fun of me because I'm like, I gotta go do homework and they're like, She's in school. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh man! All right, let me go get Liam because I sent a text. But oh, I hear he has yeah. the phone. That's why my mom didn't see the the text. I'll be back. Okay. Say hi. Say hello. Hi, Mister. Hi. <laughs> oh, <pussy>. oh, yeah. <laughs> hi. I'm doing play with you know Yeah, I'm exactly. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. Stop playing with me. You're gonna do this on camera? Okay, okay. Mix <laughs> it up. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hi, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The life, the life. We're still here. <laughs> yes, the special guest is here. Um, last round of comments. So before we let you go, like, tell us where we can find you, what's coming up next, where we should be looking out for you. Um, I'm most active on Instagram, although I haven't been super active on as of late, but uh, Felicia George, at Felicia George. Um, yeah, that's the place you can find me mainly. Oh, um, yes. they sing this year. She was killing the what? bugs. Man, Renata would have been a dope play. I saw you doing some videos. Yeah. You were doing like nutrition and stuff. Oh yeah, well that's one of my sponsors. I do some like little videos for them. I've actually really enjoyed doing that because I've and I've purposely tried to just do it like really like goofy, like that goofy side of me and yeah. crazy. No, I don't. So I'm like okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, I have. I actually, I will. What I was gonna do from last year, I actually was gonna do a whole docu-series and I started when I was in Finland. So I have so much footage from that and I just didn't continue in Grenada. So I definitely have something coming out from that footage in, in Finland. So it's gonna kind of be like my first little bit work with my coach, work with my physio and that little beginning part of it. Um, actually, I had I had some videographers work with me. So okay. um, yeah, that will be coming out. I think it's gonna be different than what I initially uh, wanted it to be so, yeah envision it would be different um because i did need to take a break from like just straight content creating um but yeah it's so you know, it is and i you know what i actually don't love having to always have my camera out so i'm trying to figure out that's why i wanted to get videographers because i'm like i don't mind someone doing the filming i just don't want to always be the one out there so i'm trying to figure out wh how to create content in a way that I can still enjoy, you know. So I can't believe we're we're bad. coming. We're coming with stuff. He he he, he getting fed. Yeah, my mom has this thing every time he's on the boob. She's like, he drinking. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know what today when I picked him up. It seems like like he doesn't really want to eat. I gave him his lunch mm. after he woke up, but he just wants to nurse. So mm. my mom was like, sometimes mm. babies have those days. You Do you eat all the time? Say. You have an appetite all the time? I'm like, okay, you're right. She wants some, you want some liquid, liquid meals. There was and that's, no that's the best stuff he could be getting in. So <laughs> that's what it is. Gosh, there was something, and I know I need to let you go, but there was something that came to mind. Oh, so recently and it was like right around the time that you said and i wish i saved it it was right around the time that you say yeah i'll do your tea time um you might have saw it something popped up on instagram where you were doing this interview and you were looking at pictures they gave you pictures and they they were like yeah i think i think he's on the, the guy that was hosting it is on right now bj really? bj i'm and pretty I sure like, but yeah oh yeah we did a tea time in new york and we rode the yeah. subway and we went to times yeah. square and yeah yeah good little vibe. yeah memories 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 that was, that's when you first started tea time yeah yeah, yeah. that was like the like popping off of yeah. yeah yeah and then i fell off and then mm. now i'm like back trying to get my life in order <laughs> yeah yeah well you i mean you've been pretty consistent I can't lie, I've definitely I felt like I was you. doing good and then I fell off the wagon last week. Um but you wanna come off and say hi now? No? Okay. I, I thought no. <laughs> no. He's like, no, I'm good. So anywho, you and I will chat offline. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for uh, gracing us with your time. We're definitely going to have to bring you back. Um, Thank you for having me. We, we'll, we'll do a panel. Do like a panel with different, a bunch yeah, of different people. I think, I think that you should yeah. bring a bobsleigh friend. And then yeah. maybe I'll bring like a basketball friend or something. I think that would be cool. Mm -hmm. I think that would be cool. I think it would be fun. Yeah. yeah would Callie do it? Yeah, she'd probably Are come on. Still? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In touch. Yeah, if funny enough, she she is with the U.S. now. I don't know if you heard about all of that. 
So I kind of sort of heard a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, she actually just won world, the world champs. That, so that's, that's, that's what I was um, thinking of because there was someone else. Who was it that she... Um, with Lolo. She won with Lolo. With Lolo. That's it. Mm-hmm. Because when yeah. I saw that and I saw Callie Humphreys, I was like, but wait. That wasn't she not... baby? And, then, <laughs> and then I did some digging and I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, mm-hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, all right. So. You ready to say hi now? You ready to say hi before we say bye-bye? Say hi. Look. Hi, Liam. Look. Oh gosh. Why? Why? <laughs> hey, look, at you. look at you on the screen. Say hi. All right. Okay, girl. All right, girl. Well, thank you thank for you. having me. Thank you all for chat. joining. We'll be back next week. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> no bathtubs. Um Yeah. <laughs> I just can't. Let me just get out of here. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) Thank you, guys.